how much stuff do we actually need to vlog? What equipment do you actually need to do a vlog with? Do you need this mountain of gear to be vlogging? Let's have a look at what you may not need to start your vlogging career. This is part one of a two-part series. Now, I broke it into two because it was going to be too long otherwise. And if you're like me and you see a video, it's like 40, 50, 60 minutes, whatever, you go, ugh. I don't have time to watch that, so you end up never watching it. So I try to keep my videos on the shorter side. That's why I've broken this down into two parts. So this is part one of part two on how to vlog, kind of a beginner's guide. We're talking about equipment, and what equipment do you need? Well, that depends on you. It really does. What are you going to do with the footage? Now, I vlog. You don't know it, really, because I never really show my vlogs, because I vlog when I'm on holidays, for myself and friends and family. They're the ones that see the vlogging. So if you're doing that, then you need different gear than if you're trying to be a vlogger for YouTube or you're trying to create a career with it. So the gear really depends on what you're going to do with it to what you need. What you have to be careful of though, is you don't get gas. I had gas once, man, expensive. Now, if you're new to that and you've never heard that term, gas in the photographic videography world means gear acquisition syndrome and you don't want it. What it means is you're buying the latest, greatest tech. As soon as it comes out, you're just buying gear all the time. And half the time, you never even really use it. So be aware of gas. Try and stay away from it. I have the little saying now, if it doesn't make the ship go faster, don't buy it. In other words, if it doesn't help me in my photographic career, then I don't buy it. If it's not really going to generate more money within my business, then what's the point of me buying it? I'm just spending money out that's not gonna give me a return. Now, if you're just doing this for fun or a hobby and the upgrade gets you a better result for what you want, go for it. But be aware, gas, you don't want it. I have seen, well, one YouTuber in the last little while got rid of like 80% of their gear because they had so much they barely even used it. So they were just selling it all off. And I've seen quite a few other YouTubers that got caught up in the gas syndrome or were just following the Joneses, so to speak, and they were just buying gear because everybody else was doing it. So be aware of that. You take the time to consider what gear you're buying. When I go on holidays, do you think I take all this? <laughs> Pretty much no. Do you know what I take? The Osmo Pocket. When I'm, and if you know, I'm a big Disney fan. So when I'm at Disney, the Osmo Pocket, I'll put a link to this down below so you can check it out. And there's some nighttime footage, daytime, and I run it through its tests. I love this little thing. I even dropped it, bent it, and straightened it. it. Still works great. But I love this because I can be walking and vlogging with it, slide it in my pocket, jump on the Haunted Mansion ride. Woohoo! It's fast. It's easy. It's very convenient. If I need a photo, I whip out my iPhone 11. Boom. Get that family photo. That's typically what I do on holidays. Now, if I want better quality images, I take a DSLR, or if you have a mirrorless, then you would take it. So when I want that better quality photo so I can print it, put it up on my wall to display, then I want a higher end quality camera to be able to do it. Honestly, the quality out of the Osmo Pocket and the iPhone 11 to, to print up good is nowhere near as good as coming out of my higher end uh, DSLR. Not this one, it's kind of the one I'm recording with. That's what I do when I'm on holidays, so that's the gear that I bought. When I'm out again on holidays or even out and about, I'll see people walking around with something like the uh, the Sony ZV-1. And uh, yeah, vlogging is becoming a little more commonplace and I see them walking around with it. I have done a bit of vlogging with it. I don't do a lot because it's not quite as convenient as with the Osmo Pocket, being able to slide in the pocket. This I have to put in the backpack, but it is still quite convenient and very handy to have. Do you need the tripod with it? Again, that's up to you. But I would recommend, even if you don't buy the Bluetooth version of this, that you have a little tripod or something, Gorillapod, that you can put underneath it. It'll help with your stabilization, stopping you doing that. It just makes it a little more stable in your hands, which gets you a bit better result. So even though you're doing it for friends and family, you still want fairly smooth video. That is a good tip for you there. I got this, not just so I could review on YouTube, but because it gave me the remote function. So I can set this up it can be on a tripod and I can remote release it so that way I'm filming myself when I'm doing YouTube. That's why I have it. 
but I have taken it out and about, not so much because of the uh, wonderful world of COVID and travel being restricted everywhere it is. But as I say, my main go-to, Osmo Pocket and my cell phone. Very minimalistic gear. Now, every once in a while though, when I'm out and about on holidays or doing some traveling around, I do see some people using gimbals. Now this one here is designed for a cell phone and there are some that are designed to hold DSLRs and or mirrorless and there's even some that will hold compacts. I do see a few of these out and about and uh, I use it but I mainly use it for YouTube purposes in helping me do some video footage because I need that really smooth footage that I need for it. Would I take this on holidays? Honestly, personally, probably not just because of the size of it, it it's more bulky versus something like this. I like the small compact easy to go but quality is good. But again, it comes back to your own needs again on that. But I do see a few people wandering around with that. The funny thing though, when I look at a lot of big YouTubers, I follow a lot of YouTubers, when I see them out vlogging and doing stuff, they're simply taking their mirrorless or DSLR in their hand like this, with a mic and a dead cat on, and they're doing this. They're not using all these stabilizers. They're not using monopods and tripods. They're just simply doing this and talking into the camera. They've done it so often that they are fairly stable and the cameras have good stabilization in it. So when they're doing their vlogging bits, the footage is pretty good. But yeah, it's funny when you see them out walking and talking with a big setup like that. Don't see it too often. But on YouTube, I definitely see a lot of the guys, they're not using all this high-end stuff. You know, some of these big rigs, they're doing it when they're doing tutorials, they're doing it when they're creating some cinematic clips and things like that. On the whole, they're not really carrying all this gear around with them. They're going very minimalistic themselves. So don't think just because the pros have all this stuff, you need it. As I say, th there's so many different setups and so many different ways you can do this. But if you're new to vlogging, vlogging in public a lot of people find intimidating a very scary place to be. I will be creating a video later on on how to vlog in public and kind of get used to that. So look forward to that video in the future. But carrying some of this stuff out, especially a big DSLR on a rig like that with the microphone, you're gonna draw a lot of attention. The Osmo Pocket on the other hand is so small, no one even knows that you're doing anything half the time because it's so small. Now, something like this is a little bigger people kind of know what you're doing but it's not quite as intrusive as walking around with something like this with the uh, camera and stuff on again especially with the DSLR so that's something that you might want to consider as well especially if you're just doing it for family and holidays you might want a little smaller setup versus spending three four thousand dollars on a mirrorless body uh, lens and everything else and trucking all this big gear around and you're going to draw a crowd if you're just standing there because they're wondering what you're doing so that's something to be aware of within your gear when you're purchasing is, again, it depends on what you're going to do with the footage. I just want you aware that the bigger your gear is, the more people are going to look. Because even I look when I see somebody like with a big rig on and they're walking around like that, I automatically think they're like filmmaking, but what are they filming and everything else. So it does draw more attention, as they say, than this. And I don't normally even have it on the Gorillapod like this. I just simply have the Osmo Pocket in my hand. And you can see, just in my hand, that is tiny. You only got this little bit showing. So again, depends on what you're going to do with it. I have more equipment than the average person because of YouTube, because I do photography and videography as a career. That's why I have additional gear. But honestly, if I was just uh, doing some uh, YouTubing and some vlogging for friends and family, I would go with like the Sony setup or something small like that. Small, convenient, easy to carry. Because the best camera you have is the camera you have with you at the time. And half the time, I don't pack and lug all this heavy stuff. All right, so that's it for part one. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. So, until part two.